Hello. I'm well, how are you? Appreciate it. So yeah. Well, I think that's it guys. We're done. Black Friday officially complete. It has definitely been one of the busiest times I've ever experienced as an eBay seller. Last week, we decided to run a 40% off store-wide sale over the Black Friday weekend for our eBay business. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And the goal that I set for ourselves was to try and achieve $1,000 every single day in sales. We wanted to do $4,000 in sales for the period. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna take you through the little pieces of footage that I captured over the four days of the sale as we were tracking towards that goal. And then I'll bring you back to present day to give you a look at how those sales actually turned out and whether or not we're able to achieve our $4,000 goal that we set for ourselves. So hopefully you enjoy this video. It's been a monster few days. I'm really glad it's finally over. But let's kick it back to Friday morning when the uh, sale first got underway. So my first task this morning is uh, what I want to do is basically clean out all of the sales that we had yesterday afternoon and late last night um, and basically right up until the point of the sale. Uh, and then I want to look out everything onto the table that comes in between 5 a.m. and 1 o'clock, which is the window of time that you need to have those orders shipped out on the very same day. I've got a same day shipping and handling time. And just because this sale's running, doesn't mean I'm gonna lengthen my shipping and handling time. I still want that to be out the same day that you buy it. Now, fortunately, this sale runs over a weekend. So once one o'clock hits this afternoon, I can let everything run all the way through until Monday when Courtney comes back in and we can just have a huge postage Monday. So my, my big priority is to see how many sales we can get come through between 5 a.m. and 1 p.m., which is what, eight hours, I think, about eight hours. Um, see how many sales can come in in that time, but then my priority between 1 and 5 p.m. is to make sure they're in mailbags and out the door. All right, it is officially 12.45. It has basically been eight hours since we started the sale. And as you can see here to my right-hand side, these are all the sales that we've had come through. Now, it might look not look too much, I guess, from afar, but we're about to jump over there and have a look into it. And I'm going to put a screen grab up right now of the sales figures to let you in on the first eight hours of this four-day sale. As you can see, we've done a total of $1,021 in revenue, which is just ridiculous. Um, we've got 28 sales. So 28 sales is sitting over here. In this little video, what I want to do is just take you through some of the best. And, and what I'm really excited about so far from what I'm seeing in this lot uh, is that a lot of the orders are coming in with multiples. So they're going through the store and they're picking out a number of different items, sometimes three or four at a time, and they're just making one big allotment of purchase. And that is a really, really good thing for me as the seller because I only need to put it all into one box and send it off. So while the profit margins are almost nothing, we're talking like 10% profit margins throughout this sale period, uh, I'm gonna actually be doing better on those scenarios where I'm not having to pay so much in postage. So first of all, what I wanna do out of this $1,000, which is so crazy to think that we've had that, which is a monster day for me. I never used to have $1,000 worth of sales and now to get it in just eight hours with this 40% off sale, it's pretty cool to see. I'm cleaning out a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have otherwise wanted. One of the first allotments that came in, and I think it was uh, 8, 8 15 this morning from a viewer of the channel as well by the name of Lois. Um, thank you very much, Lois, for your purchase. Um, she's picked up, she knows her DVDs, put it that way. She's picked up some absolutely ripping titles. These are some rare titles when it comes to DVDs. River Monsters, um, she's got a large allotment. Every single one of the uh, DVDs that I had, she went through and just cleaned them all out. Uh, I probably should have done them as one big group listing, so I'm glad she's done that for me. Um, Midsummer Murders, we've got season 17 and 18, and then Secret and Lies, she's also picked that up. So a DVD bundle like this that I'm going to put into a box for a shipping price of around about $12, uh, I've been able to sell it for $132. So when you take off postage, it's $120 worth of DVDs, albeit every single one of these was purchased with a 40% off sale. So, you know, I certainly didn't pay anywhere near $120 to get my hands on all of these. They're DVDs, so I would have paid no more than about $2. So even though we're $2 in on all of them, we're talking like, what, 20 bucks in? And I've been able to convert it into $120, even with a 40% off sale. So for those out there that are stressing that it's not gonna actually make money, it all over overall, I think this will be sort of a 10% sort of a profit margin exercise as I touched on previously. Um, but this one here was a real winner out of the allocation. 
Here's another group listing that I'm really excited to see go. If you have a look at these titles, you'll know just how common they are. We've got Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Uh, we've got The OC, Season 1 to 3. It's not even complete. And then we've got The Hills, which is also just a partial, Season 1 to 4. And then we've got some Coca-Cola playing cards. This isn't something that I'm going to pick up ever again. So these are the sorts of items I wouldn't ever buy any more into the future with my eBay business. They're too generic, they're too common, they don't sell for very much money. Yet this customer was able to come through my store, clean out all of these items in one lump sum order, and I've got an order value here of $42.80. Again, it's going to be similar uh, to the lowest DVD purchase that she grabbed, where it's going to cost me about $10 to $12 to ship this off. So we're talking about $30 worth of value. But in all honesty, I don't want this in the garage. So to see this go and to be able to get some money for it, fantastic. All right, this one here as well is a really good sale. Three video games and we've got one DVD. So the DVD is Return to Duke Nukem High Volume 1. And then we've got three video games, uh, Condemned 2 on the PS3. We've got Naruto. Um, this is the Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution on the PS3. And then we've got a really good game actually, Legacy of Kane Defiance on the PS2, complete with manual. It's also in very good condition as well. Um, again, a four order purchase, which is brilliant to see. Um, $53 was the sale price for those four. So I'm going to wrap them up into some bubble wrap and then we're going to put it into a small satchel. Um, send that one off for about $8.50 with my Band 5 Australia Post discount. Um, so that brings it down to $45. So ultimately, these have sold for about $11 each, which is actually a fantastic deal for the person that's buying it um, because obviously with a 40% increase in those costs, um, I would have made a whole lot more money even selling them individually because postage costs are only about $5 to send these each off. Um, so it would have normally cost me about 20 bucks in shipping. Um, but because he's buying it in one lump sum, I saved myself about $11 odd dollars uh, by putting it into a small satchel. So... A bit of a, a hit and miss winner there. Um, that one's, to be fair, not too bad because it is a group order, which is obviously what I've been talking about. It's what I want to see. Here is everything else that has been able to come through this morning in what was just an eight-hour time span. So there's a good, you know, 25-odd orders here that we need to facilitate, but they are all individual orders. So we had a really good local pickup come through here for Mario Kart on the Nintendo Wii with a couple of uh, steering wheel wheels as well. That sold for $39.00. We're doing some big Wii bundles. You can see they're starting to sell really well. On the buses, the complete collection on DVD, that sold for about $35. Um, this big Steve Irwin collection actually was only just recently listed, so it actually didn't make the 40% off sale. Um, so they paid full price of about $60, and it's going overseas as well. So that was a little bonus to, uh, to top us up. Um, we sold season 1 to 10 of South Park this morning as well. That one's going out for about 50 odd dollars. It will cost a little bit to ship off there, and I would have paid a little bit to get my hands on that. Um, so we might be pretty much breaking even, maybe even taking a small loss on South Park, but that's not too bad. Um, we've got some more DVDs here, American Pickers selling for $15. We've got these decks of cards. These are just Singapore airline cards, uh, and they sold for $25, I think, in total cost. Uh, that'll go straight into a small satchel. Um, we sold a Fuggler for about $18. I think I paid $10 in store for that, so that's pretty much money back. Uh, we got $15 on this little Skylander figure. Uh, the Wire on DVD, that only sold for about $12, so we're not going to make anything there. Um, this was a great one, though. This old-school video game console in box as well. It is pretty much complete from what I can see. Um, there it is there, as you can see, the old device. Uh, we got $105. And that was with the 40% off. So I think I was pricing it up for about 180, something like that. Um, so they've been able to get a pretty good result there at 105. I'm happy to get that takeaway as well. Uh, and then we've sold some hats here as well for 20 bucks. And that one went for 20 bucks as well. So a couple of cheap hats. Uh, and then all of these here are going to go into an untracked envelope. Um, they've just worked out to be pretty much $15 or less. Um, some of them are only going for sort of seven or eight dollars. Uh, but still, they're, they're just games and DVDs that, I don't know, I'm, I'm happy to see them go. We've got so much in this place, so it's good to clean out some of these items. So, look guys, for what, eight hours worth of sales with another three and a half days to go here? I'm really excited about this, and I've hit my cutoff as well now. So I can go ahead, I can ship off all of these items, and then we can hold on to everything that we collect in sales from here on in. And Courtney can help me on Monday with all of that. Saturday morning. I'm actually going to go back to the post office 
uh, to just drop off six orders that I had to put into boxes that I wasn't able to pick up yesterday uh, before I had to leave for the afternoon. So I've just finished them off this morning, which now brings us up to date for the completion of day one. So all of these orders that we've had now come through over the last however many hours it's been, maybe 12, 15 hours, something like that, uh, can all be posted on Monday. So I don't need to do it. But what I might do is actually just look out a few orders I'm thinking on this Saturday morning just to just to get myself a little bit ahead of the game for Monday morning um, because sales over the last 15 hours has been great. Uh, we're up to a total now of I think 50 orders to find and, and then ship off. Uh, the numbers yesterday for day one finished up at $1,600 worth of revenue, which may be a record. I'd have to go back and have a bit of a look to see, but I don't know if I've ever done $1,500 plus. Uh, so it's very cool to see $1,600. Our goal is $1,000 a day, obviously, with the 4K that we're trying to aim for. So, you know, to see $1,600 worth of a start gets us going pretty comfortably. And then this morning, what is it now, 10.30 or so, uh, we've done another five, close to $500, maybe just over $500. So our numbers for the entire period of this sale so far, which is nothing more than about 28 or 29 hours in, we're a little over a day into it, uh, we've done over $2,000. We're over halfway towards our goal with ultimately two and a half days left in the sale. Beautiful. Thanks, Eves. Have a good one. See you later. Now, I think I said in the last clip, Courtney, because it's Monday now. Mm. But I was last talking to them and it was Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. It's not Saturday morning anymore. I took the weekend off. Oh, uh, yes. That's the update. I don't have any orders from Saturday morning, but I do because they are, they are all collected here. We're going to be going through everything that's come through from Saturday morning when I last spoke to you. It's Sunday and now what is Monday midday. We're about to ship off everything now that Courtney's in. Uh, Courtney's going to give me a hand in getting all this out the door. Because we didn't need to go ahead and automatically ship the postage over the weekend, I just let it all build up. Um, and we've just spent the morning collating it all, putting it all together, getting a bit of an idea about things so we can communicate to you guys in this video. Um, and the updated sales numbers here are pretty exciting. I'll B-roll it again, Courtney. $956 ended up coming through on Saturday. Almost close to that $1,000 that we're kind of averaging or wanting to average. And then we got $947 come through on Sunday. Um, so we had a very much exceeded first day. And then we had what I was expecting for the next two days. And then so far on the 27th being today, the, the very last day of the sale, sales are still coming through. Um, we're sitting on about, I think it's about 390. Mm -hmm. What that means is we were just looking at the numbers, weren't we? And we were on yeah. about, I think it was 3,890. Yeah. So we're $110 off our goal and we've got basically 12 hours left. So I think we're going to hit our goal, which is incredibly exciting. And that gives us an opportunity to hit our 13,200, which is going to be our overall goal um, for the biggest ever month of revenue uh, on eBay in three and a half years. So that's pretty exciting if we can hit that. Um, so yeah, that, that's an update on the numbers. Um, Courtney's in Monday morning. We've looked everything out. And what we thought we'd do for you guys is we'd just look out everything um, in our two biggest selling categories, obviously being the DVDs and obviously being the video games uh, as well. There are a few pretty good sales that came out of this lot. I think these two were probably some good ones. We had this one here, Anton Shekov collection. That sold for $40. I think that was, I think you recently listed this one though, Courtney. Really? I think you did because it sold full price, 40 no sale. So an update on that, guys, is anything when we ran the sale that was within the last couple of weeks of being listed didn't get a 40% discount. Um, it, it was still available for purchase. It just wasn't at the discounted rate. This was an example of that. Um, so there were, a, well, I don't know, maybe a 100 or two of those items. Uh, and then the other one is the shoes and the accessories. Shoes and accessories didn't get the 40% off either because we were running that 15% off special um, for the couple of weeks leading into the sale. I didn't realize that you can't just jump it straight back into a 40% off as well. Um, so all of our shoes, unfortunately, didn't go on to sell that heavily over the weekend. We did get a couple that I'll show you guys a little bit later. Um, but I wanted to go through a breakdown. I've got the laptop sales results here. So DVDs, all of these DVDs, plus everything that we shipped out earlier in the video from Thursday, uh, from Friday, 
um, was $1,482 in DVDs. It made up, well, so far to date, it's made up 38% uh, of our overall sales. Um, the video game category has made up very close to 20%. So 20% of our revenue uh, coming in the video game space, we've done a total volume in video games of $768. Um, there are a couple of group orders. Um, I mean, there were bundles. We speak about bundles all the time. These were listed as bundles, so the customer has basically just bought them all off the one listing. Uh, I think that one there sold for about $70, which was great to see. Um, and then all of these games here were just individual games selling for around about a $20 uh, average sale price, um, maybe even a little bit less actually, maybe about $15 worth of an average sale price. Um, so very much just turning over. Um, or, as well as this, this is the envelope DVDs. So we'll be putting all of those into an envelope. And then these were all multi-listings that will go into a satchel or a box, depending on how big it is. We sold One Tree Hill there, one to nine um, in, in that, which was obviously a pretty big listing. So We'll play around with the postage setup, but ultimately, guys, that's a good look at our top two biggest selling categories. Uh, we'll give you a look at a couple of the multi-orders that came in as well. Um, so, so these were the multi-orders. So was, you always want the multi-order because you've got the opportunity um, to save on postage, which I've already spoken about. But this one right here, Ghost in the Shell, there were three, uh, three in there. That was a, a listing of three, but then they also bought Blood, The Last Vampire, and they also brought a copy of the Star Wars Clone Wars. So that will go into a small satchel. We'll save on postage with three different orders. This was another one right here in front of you, Courtney. Mm. Uh, we had seven Funko Pops sell in total. So um, good. Which is great because we're no longer selling those. Um, so that one there sold as well as a big bundle of 10 Goosebump books. We had a... <laughs> We had one of these that we will never, ever buy again. I didn't think we even had any of them. No, well, we've slowly phased out of them. Um, we, we bought a bunch one day, and that was the last we'll ever do. And, and one of these hats as well for the Waratahs. So we got $50 as a sale price you know, for those four items, which as an average sale price, it's like 12 bucks each. But when there's only one shipping amount, it's fantastic. So 50 bucks for those four, we'll put that into a box. That won't be an issue. Uh, we sold four shadowless Pokemon cards. Um, so we've got Ponyta, we've got Machoke, um, Tangela, and then Poliwag. And uh, I can't remember how much they went for, but I think that would have been about, I think they were $6 each. Mm. Um, so that was about a $24 sale price there. Uh, and we'll put that into a, a tracked postage yeah. uh, envelope. So that's only going to cost us about 5 bucks. And then these two Pokemon cards sold, Pikachu and Mew. So that wasn't too bad. And then we had more Pokemon stuff over here. Uh, there was a Pokemon pin. There was a cool Gengar bag. And then a Pokemon card there as well that sold as a multi-quantity order bundle there as well. In the books, uh, we had these books go on to sell individually. Uh, we also had, actually they were all individual sales. Um, we had a couple of these and we're actually gonna put them into envelopes um, when we ship these out. They can go into the large tracked envelope. That shouldn't be an issue. They shouldn't get damaged. Um, but this one, Foot Trot Flats, number 27, sold for $81. We got 81 bucks for this, which was just crazy because it's about a $120 book. Uh, with 40% off, I'm happy to, to get 81 bucks because I didn't pay a whole lot for it. I think I paid $5 from a massive stack of these Foot Trot Flats and I've just listed that one individually uh, to sell. Mm. Oh, and then this one as well. We had two Wii games in the video game category that sold that we'll put into a large tracked envelope um some shoes as well courtney obviously i said that they weren't on uh on mm. sale didn't stop us selling a few we yeah. got these doc martens these were bought at the flea market a few weeks ago uh somebody sent me an offer i had it up for 160 they sent me an offer for 120 and i took it mm. um so that's a great sale don't know where it's going but it's domestic um and then we sold these as well these are some paul george basketball shoes some pg4s and they sold for 90 dollars. wow that's good we had some really big heavy hitters in the shoes over 200 dollars in the, just those two pairs uh and then these the timberland women's boots i've had these forever i've had them for such a long time so i'm really really excited to see the back end of them um we'll have to put them into a box mm. probably just like that uh, so yeah, three pairs of shoes that will shoot out the door. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a great room in, in the... <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the laundry. It's actually a horrible place. Welcome to the laundry. <laughs> um, there's nothing crazy to report. I, I did sell that though. 
mm. that crazy Super Bowl hat that we put in the video. Yeah. Um, I listed it up for eighty, and I took a best offer of sixty-five dollars. Yeah. Sixty-five into a box. Um, these hats weren't great in the sense of value that we got for them. I think that was about twenty for the Magpies, fifteen for that, maybe fifteen. And I think that one went for about seventeen. Yeah. Uh, but another four, another four hats, five hats in total selling. Um, then we had a lot of other bits and pieces, like we had some Bratz dolls, we had a Furby, a bunch of Funko Pops were selling, some more Pokemon cards, some Funko Pops loose. We sold these Heineken coasters, a set of four Heineken coasters. So odds and ends, basically, which is all stuff that we're not really going to be sourcing too much anymore. Um, so like I said, very good to see it go. Um, so all up, all up, that works out to 189 sales. We've had 189 sales uh, since Friday morning. So, you know, three and a half days, 189 sales. And normally we're doing a what sold on a Monday morning. Uh, on a normal week, it's about 30 orders. Mm. So we're about six times, we've had six times the growth in quantity sold with this 40% off sale. So... It's definitely done its job. We're $120, $110 away from hitting our goal. Um, so far, with just 12 hours left to go, I'm pretty excited about things. So rather than bore you with what was ultimately two days worth of sitting down at this table, shipping off all of these items, um, we've got to what is now Wednesday morning. And Wednesday morning is just such a relief because we are now finally through every single order that came through of the sale and I have a full look at the four days worth of sales um, to take you guys through. So look, let's just pull the numbers up and I'll take you through them one by one. Firstly, we were able to get that extra $120 and we actually surpassed it by $413 with a $902 fourth and final day. I thought that Cyber Monday might have seen a, a similar increase to day one. I thought maybe upwards of $1,500, um, but it didn't quite take off too much. It was actually our slowest day of the four days. Um, so last day didn't really help there, but still the job had been done by that point, $4,413. Um, the fees that came out of it, um, $635, which worked out to 14.4% worth of fees, uh, which is pretty standard. I was kind of anticipating that it would be around about that 15%. Um, quantity sold, we sold 215 items. Now, at the beginning of the sale, we had 2,700 items in store. So 215 works out to probably 8, 8.5% 8 of our entire store was sold over these last four days. So when I tell you that we were shipping for literally two days, uh, we were. There was more volume than I've ever seen before over a four-day period, an average of 50 sales every single day for four days. I don't know how volume sellers do that. Um, it was an absolute... Well, I was wrecked, put it that way. I slept pretty well last night. Um, the average sale price just hovered slightly over $20, $20.53. You'll see there on the little graph that it's a, a drop of 27.8%. It wasn't a drop of 40%. Um, because of those multiple sales that we're able to get at the full asking price, it was all of the shoes that sold, the Doc Martens, the PG4s, um, that had the PlayStation game sell for $70. So there were some really big ticket items that sold for the full asking price, which has inflated our discount from 40% overall to $27.80. So all of these numbers here are just our, our holistic sales over the four-day Black Friday weekend. Um, so that's helped us out a little bit there. It's given a few extra dollars of profit in our pocket, which I'll take you guys through uh, a little bit later. Um, so in total, 215 items. We had 186 buyers. Um, so there were an, an additional 29 items that were bought in multiples um, throughout all the different orders. Um, the best selling categories, as you can see here, which is great for us on a profit perspective because the cost of goods are so cheap uh, when we play in DVDs and video games and they actually made up pretty much the majority of the sale. You're looking at about 57% of our sales uh, was DVDs and video games, which is very similar to what we do across the entire year as well. So no real surprises there. Uh, and then we had video game consoles, books and some Pokemon cards that rounded out the other uh, top categories. 
Um, so if we go into the sort of the breakdown of where the profit is, the profit margins, all the pre-tax numbers, um, you've obviously got all the, the initial data there, but the postage ended up working out to be $1,278.47. Uh, it worked out to be like an average of $6.50 because there were so many untracked envelopes uh, that went out between $2 to $3. Uh, and then there were a lot of large envelopes that went for about $6.50. And then there were the boxes um, that really, there weren't any massive boxes. So postage actually wasn't too much of a hindrance. Uh, and that's why the average um, sale pro or average postage price was around that $6.50 or whatever it works out to. Um, so postage was pretty decent, all things considering, considering you've got to get that much volume out. Uh, I thought $1,278 worth of an expense wasn't, wasn't the worst. Um, the fees, obviously 14.4%, so I've put that in there at $635.11. Uh, and then the cost of goods, out of those 215 items, the cost of those goods initially to purchase them uh, was 1000 basically 1400 $1,397.50. So um, the actual true result of this sale, while it was great to see the goal hit $4,400, um, cash flow after fees and postage uh, meant that we've now got $2,500 in the bank account to be able to use on bills and more stock and growing the business even further. Um, but a true profit look of the numbers uh, is basically $1,101, $1,100. Uh, and the profit margin pre-tax on that $1,100 compared to the overall revenue uh, tells us it's about a 25% profit margin. Um, so I was anticipating about 10% worth of a profit margin. I spoke about that quite heavily throughout the video. Um, and obviously the inflation there in those other top selling items, the Doc Martens, et cetera, um, have caused the profit margin to you know, increase overall as well. I think the 57% worth of sales in the DVDs and the video game category um, really helped the profit margin too because those cost of goods were so low. Um, you know, a dollar a piece selling for you know, even 15 to $16 is still a fantastic return in profit margin. So um, that's why that makes sense there as well. So, you know, this room is 8% lighter, um, which was definitely the goal. This wasn't really a profit goal, albeit we're able to make an average of $250 in profit every single day throughout the sale, which I think is awesome. Um, so yeah, we've got two and a half grand in the pocket. We've got 8% of our store cleaned out. So we can use that two and a half grand now to buy better stock, bring it back in, make even more money from it. So look, I think it's been a huge success. I don't think it's something that I'm going to do regularly. I think I'm going to wait for Black Friday every year to do it. Um, I, think, uh, I think you could do it maybe twice a year um, as well. I think maybe no more than twice a year is probably the way I would run things from here on in. Um, let me know how you went if you ran a Black Friday sale. I'd be really curious to see how your numbers went, whether or not you thought it was worthwhile, uh, albeit all of the time that it takes to post off your items. Uh, you still can make a couple of dollars in your pocket as we have here. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, I'm stoked that we're finally through it. Uh, looking forward to getting out there and buying a bunch more items to sell for a much higher asking price and a much bigger profit margin. Uh, I'll leave you with this video right here, which was a big day out at the flea market a couple of days ago. Thanks for being here, guys. Really appreciate all of your support. Look forward to seeing you soon. See you later.